My name is Ed Gliss. I'm here, obviously, on behalf of Michelin, and I'm looking forward to the discussion today. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here and have this discussion. A little bit about me. I actually grew up in Buffalo, New York, so not too far from here. I can relate to the cold, uh, colder climate and actually having four real seasons. Uh, currently, I reside in Greenville, South Carolina, which is Michelin's North American headquarters. Uh, I went to school in Rochester, New York to, at RIT. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know, it is a five-year collegiate program because there's one year of internships built into the curriculum. Um, so when I say I went there for five years, it's not a bad thing. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I was a five-year member of the, the Formula SAE team. So again, if, if anyone's not aware, it's a collegiate design series. Uh, of course, it closely ties to mechanical engineering, which is my field of study. But Students uh, hand build, design, hand build, and then compete with race cars internationally. Uh, so the first picture is myself driving at the competition in Germany. Uh, the picture below it is uh, the woman I'm embracing is my wife. Uh, <laughs> so we met on the, the Formula team, which is great. So uh, the two of us have uh, common interests and enthusiasm for vehicles. We've now got two little girls. Uh, they're obviously following along in our footsteps. Uh, that's just a... Uh, Local circle track, Friday night fun. Uh, for those of you who shared some concern, don't worry. BF Goodrich is owned by Michelin, so it's okay that I'm highlighting that brand. Um, but these are some ads from uh, seven, eight years ago. Some of you might recognize them from you know, some of the various car magazines. But um, I had the good pleasure of being the stunt driver for all of that filming. So some very fond memories. Anytime you can uh, close down a public road and uh, exercise the performance of the tires and the vehicles is, is great. So uh, just a quick highlight on the for the Mustang, we did some filming in Joshua Tree National Park in California. Again, closed road. At the end of the day, I notified the police officer that we no longer needed filming, uh, and he asked if he could chase me, <laughs> which, which I gladly obliged uh, as long as he put his lights on. So that was a fun sunset tour through Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, and then likewise, uh, um, Grassroots Motorsports is something that is near and dear to Michelin. Uh, so I've had the good pleasure of participating in the One Lap of America the past three years. And I'm excited to announce I'll be back again for a fourth year this year. Um, so that's, uh, that's a really fun time to interact with true enthusiasts and not just from the OE perspective. Um, jumping back to my career with Michelin, straight out of college I started. I did two years in the technical sector, which... Uh, my responsibility was mold design, essentially the whole exterior of the tire. Um, about, after about two years of that, I decided I wanted to um, be a test driver. So I go, went ahead and uh, was fortunate enough that there was an opening and I jumped on it. Uh, so just under 10 years, I fulfilled that role. And then about two years ago, um, I switched into technical product marketing, like I mentioned, where Steve Calder is. Um, he's, again, another former test driver. So when we're put out to pasture, this is kind of where we end up. <laughs> So like I said, fruit, fruitful partnership. We're both uh, enamored to work together. And I want to give a little bit more of a deep dive into the NSPEC achievements, uh, what it looks like to development that, and uh, highlight some of the pilot products. So it's been touched on already a good bit today, but an NSPEC tire and repurchasing an NSPEC tire is going to preserve the personality of, of, of your Porsche, as, as Porsche intended it. Um, so anytime you deviate from that, it's definitely a choose-your-own-adventure territory. What can be guaranteed is the fact that things will be preserved if you continue to buy NSPEC. Um, fortunately, uh, as the NSPEC proliferates and the Porsche lineup proliferates, uh, they've gone ahead and introduced an additional character. Uh, so the, the letter immediately following the end will now uh, correspond to a, a, a platform which is hugely helpful as uh, there's some carryover of dimensions between different platforms. <coughs> Again, touching a little bit on what goes into a Mark tire and how real is it? Is it just a price difference? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, so what this is is a screenshot of, of course, the tire design. What you see on the top is a standard, or what we like to say is the replacement market pilot sport for us. So not developed with any one particular vehicle or customer. Um, it could fit in a number of vehicles. The main thing to look at is you see the blue 
and the green in, in the tread area. So those represent two different rubber compounds. The bottom screenshot is of an OE tuned Pilot Sport 4S. What you'll see is no blue and no green. And in, besides just different colors, there's three of them and they're distributed all over the place. And so this is why if you just if went ahead and did a, a price shop or decided to deviate from an NSPEC marking, it is truly choose your own adventure. Another way to kind of graphically visualize that, the, the core of the Pilot Sport 4S is a dual compound. So the, the, the general replacement market standard recipe for a Pilot Sport 4S is going to have a dry oriented compound on the outside and a, a more wet focused compound on the inner ribs. Um, this dual compound is what makes it so versatile and so capable. What you are allowed to do when you develop it specifically for a vehicle uh, is, is fine tune that. So what you'll see is, um, again graphically, you've got three different colors. You've still got a mix of wet and dry focused compounds, but they're in different locations. Um, whether or not you're sensitive enough to, to notice some of these differences, I'll leave that for you to go ahead and judge, um, but it's real. The, the, the mark development uh, entire process is, is, is true. And again, reminding you that there's several hundred components that make up the tire. What we've touched on here is just the rubber compound. Uh, you've got belt angles, you've got the diameter of the products within the side of the tire that can change things. It's almost uh, innumerable how many changes you can make, so um, it's, uh, it's real. Take this for example. Uh, so this is just a, a generic size that I chose, the 245, 35, 20. There are eight offers inside the Michelin portfolio that are a Pilot Sport 4S. Seven of them are OE specific. One of them is the generic RT, which is here where it has no OE marking. Now highlighting two, again, this is why everyone should be thankful that Porsche and Michelin have, have gone ahead and embraced the, the additional uh, marking which has NAO to help differentiate because otherwise you would have had two NOs, uh, N0s in, in the same geo box. Um, but just to call out, if you are going on to your favorite online retailer and simply price shopping for this dimension, it's truly choose your own adventure. You've got two Ferrari ones, you've got two Mercedes ones, who knows. Doing a little bit more of a deep dive into the Michelin Pilot family. Um, knowing that we're pressing up against lunch, I'll try and make it interesting. Uh, but I wanted to highlight the Cup 2R, the Cup 2, and the Pilot Sport 4S, as those are uh, most near and dear to this performance side of things. So as I mentioned earlier, the Pilot Sport 4S is by default going to incorporate dual compounds. Um, so again, that's a dry focused and a, a, a wet focused. Once you go ahead into the OE space and do a custom development, there's more options on the table. And a common theme that you're going to see is this dynamic response technology, which is really just a link from our motorsports learnings into the, into the street orientation. Um, and so it's, it's a mix of uh, hybrid, and, uh, hybrid air mid and nylon fabric that allows us to just make sure that when you give a steering input, the tire translates all of that directly to the road and gives you a really nice engaging driving experience. Cup 2, this turns it up a little bit. Of course, uh, we're still playing with the dual compounds. Um, again, the dynamic response technology, and one thing I really wanted to highlight that's neat is what we call this wavy summit architecture. And if you can envision that underneath the tread blocks, we're able to modulate our belt package and carcass um, so that it goes up into that and gives you increased rigidity. So obviously you couldn't do that in the rain grooves because they would be exposed, but if you do it inside where the, the, the rubber tread blocks are, um, there's performance advances. So Cup 2 embraces this. And then Cup 2R, of course, this is uh, what we like to call the lap time smasher. This is uh, when you're going all out, maximum attack, trying to go 10 tenths and, and set a, a PR or a lap record. The main thing here is it's even more motorsports oriented, uh, still has that dynamic response technology, um, but the tread pattern is optimized for maximum contact patch. Uh, reduced tread depth, but again, this is maximum attack. What does that mean practically? Well, graphically, it means the Pilot Sport 4S generally should be 20% track, 80% road. Cup 2 kind of shifts it the other way, maybe 80% track, 20% road, and then Cup 2R again, perfectly. It's DOT legal, it's streetable, um, but it is track focused, and that's uh, the, the best way to kind of embrace it. 
Uh, it depends uh, on, on your care and feeding of the tire, um, but, but for sure there is um, a sticker effect, if you will. So it, when brand new, that's uh, going to be your, your go get it lap. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, one, one, 140. 140. Yep. Uh, and the cup two in the middle? 240. Yeah. Whew, got it right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, just visually, basically the black is going to be the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. Great, versatile, still sport oriented, uh, but it does account for a mix of highway use and, and track use. As you get more and more track focused, basically you're conceding wet capability and lifespan at the, uh, at the benefit of, of you know, more grip. Um, so this is kind of in your, in your purchase decision matrix. This is uh, the options. Good. Uh, again, not to steal the thunder of some of the other presentations, but the main highlight is that if you're fortunate enough to own a, a Porsche GT product, uh, inside the user's manual, there's really, really great setup instructions from uh, alignment specs and also inflation um, pressures for your tires. So um, first recommendation is, of course, to go ahead and utilize that. Uh, that's basically been developed in partnership with Michelin anyways, so I don't want to overstep there. Um, but with that in mind, uh, there are some general guidelines which I'm willing to share today. So from a, a tire temperature standpoint, and it's important to note that this is not the infrared you know, scan your forehead, this is a, this is a proper tire probe measuring um, actual, you know, rubber temperature, not just the surface. Um, so here we're talking about more inflation pressures, but the sweet spot, generally speaking, across the range of Michelin products is going to be in that 30 to 38. I'm sure you've all felt it. If you get it wrong on a hot summer day, you get too much inflation pressure. Think back to the beginning of this talk and uh, you, you're not effectively using the entire footprint of the tire. You're starting to overload and overheat a small portion, and that's just, uh, you know, going to snowball from there. Again, continuing the inflation pressure, the big risk is uh, going out on track under, severely underinflated, and not driving, um, you know, being able to build up enough pressure to adequately support the vehicle. So this obviously has endurance and casing concerns from a tire standpoint. As we touched on earlier, it's not good for wear, um, and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to optimize your experience overall. So, it's a good if if you're new to it, go ahead and start with your OE recommended placard pressures, which again we touched on. Um, if uh, you know, make sure you're maintaining the front to rear split. That's uh, again been derived not just randomly, but through mm, lots of development and optimization with Porsche. And um, you know, just, just monitor your hots, and of course, if you're able to do a track alignment, um, you know, more cameras helpful. Uh, it's really easy to overload and overwork those front tires, which is going to, you know, make, let you experience more and more understeer, which typically isn't enjoyable, but also it's going to overload the outside shoulder um, and, uh, you know, negatively affect wear. Just an anecdotal example of a, a Cup 2 product. Um, you can see when new versus after a couple sessions, although it may look like some of the surface features have gone away, we've embraced the motorsports sort of tread depth style. Um, it still has the normal tread wear indicators, but uh, typical that you might see on a proper R comp uh, tire, you see the tread depth. So um, this one, don't throw it out yet. If you're done with it, send it my way. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the, the tire like OE fitment development process. Um, and so basically, uh, Porsche would ap approach uh, various tire companies and, and basically do a bid out. Um, and they'd give some specifics about the vehicle platform, what entails its development, uh, how many vehicles are going to be sold, what type of tire they're interested in. And, uh, you know, in this case, Michelin would, would respond to that, taking into account uh, their technical expectations, and, and we'll respond with how we can uh, meet those needs. A lot of it starts with nowadays uh, virtual simula simulation, which is great. So Michelin can lean on um, you know, motorsports heritage and F1. Uh, you can see a machine test here, which puts a tire under lateral load and is showing our cornering stiffness. 
uh, mapping so you can get real data in a machine test and then it helps to build a stronger and stronger model where you're able to simulate this. The benefit is you can iterate through lots and lots of designs before you actually have to invest and build a mold and build tires. Um, and, and this could happen far in advance of Porsche even having a vehicle to test tires on. Um, so it's crucial uh, and it's why partnerships and open communication really let you move this timeline further and further into the future for product life cycles.